Hey, hi, it's Meredith. I am here with a special reading uh, all about the full moon that we are about to have on the 31st of October on Halloween. That full moon is happening in the sign of Taurus and I just felt guided to do a reading about it. How best can we uh, use the energies of the full moon? So I consulted a couple of different oracle decks. First, we have the Moonology deck. <laughs> and I pulled out the cards for the full moon in Taurus. And it's also a blue moon. So I thought we'd put down a card for the blue moon as well. So full moon energy, full moon in Taurus, and blue moon. Then I decided to pull out the oracle of the seven energies. So we'll get into those and then we have uh, the Wheel of the Year Tarot to go just a bit deeper with the message. So full moon in Taurus, the card says your dreams need a practical plan. So this is about putting some energy into your dreams and goals and, and certainly use the building energy of the full moon to do that. It's a great time for contemplation. You know, we're still in the Mercury retrograde. Excellent time for reflection. Excellent time to take a look at what's now and decide how you'd like to tweak things. <laughs> Try something you haven't considered, right? And put those energies into motion. So let's pull an oracle card for the full moon in Taurus. We have great big love. Oh, how nice. I love the love messages, I really do. We've been getting a lot of them lately. And great big love, that all starts with you. And I feel that that is a bit of an invitation there with the card. Perhaps some of your goals, dreams, uh, what you're holding in heart space really does need a little bit more love on your part. Maybe you haven't been able to tune into what's in heart space. Perhaps, uh, you know, this is a big time of energy clearing. We are in Scorpio season and you know that means going deep within the self and I'm hearing from and experiencing myself. Uh, I'm hearing from a lot of people experiencing myself, but a lot of uh, ego chatter, uh, old stories and deep connection to some challenging emotions that are coming out of old belief system and programming. And when those energies come up, they feel so real as they're passing away from us. That's really what's happening. So we may be, uh, we may be having an emotional overflow that sounds a whole lot like negativity, challenge, self-doubt, insecurity, self-sabotage. This came up a bit in the November readings, which will be linked for you at the end of this video because they're all up on the channel and ready for you to watch. Uh, so at this time in the, in the season of Scorpio, we go deep. The Mercury retrograde is happening in Scorpio. Uh, the sun is in Scorpio. What's not in Scorpio? <laughs> anyway, you know it though. This is a very this is a this is the type of energy in which we go mining within our own subconscious. In fact, I think one of the no the November readings is titled that way. Regardless, we're going deep and we're discovering. If you go looking for it, you're going to find it, whatever it is, and it's something that we're living uncomfortably with, and it's just revealing itself in the beautiful light of the moon <laughs> and in the paradoxical hindsight of the retrograde. It looks real, sounds real, feels real, though it's passing. It's, it's truly temporary. And whatever emotional challenge we have before us is, it's leaving us. And it's something that we can be in appreciation for. And it's going to take some great big love for us to be nurturing, caring, supportive to ourselves, to not succumb to what sounds like the ego chatter being true. 
Okay, let's see what our next Oracle card is for the full moon energy, which says surrender to the divine. <laughs> that message right there is up for me. Allow the divine to work in your world. Allow things to come to you. Allow your gifts, your blessings through this. And, you know, do see that if you're peeling back layers of energy that doesn't serve you, that in itself is a gift. Mm. Very, very powerful, profound spiritual journey work. And the Oracle card to go with that is beautiful uncaging. Whoa, right? Isn't that all about you liberating yourself, being your authentic self, unapologetically you? Nice heart, love, energy here. Mm. I think that speaks for itself. Allow this process and allow the gifts of this process, allow the full moon energy to pull you in, drag you under even. And while you're in the depths of your own being, really take a look out for what is broadcasting out of the subconscious that is not in synchronicity with your heart space and give that a great big love and a thank you and the appreciation that it is required so that it can truly be on its way and flow away from you. I know it's easy to say that here sitting before these beautiful cards and I know it's quite another thing to be sitting in your living room attempting not to binge eat on some kind of garbage because you'd rather hide from what the ego has to say and what's passing off the foundation. Mm. Yeah, quite a bit of contrast there, right? <laughs> we all know what that feels like though. So I say, get into the heart space, go as deep and as far as you've got to go to find the love within yourself, to let all of this flow, have this beautiful uncaging, be the great big love that you are. Let's see what our next Oracle card is. <laughs> yeah. Hey now. <laughs> Waking the lion, yeah, definitely. Get down in there into the depths and wake your inner fire, your lion. Come out roaring joyfully. <laughs> yeah, that's a great big heck, yeah. So wake the lion inside. That comes with the blue moon card. I almost forgot that. Believe in the impossible. I say believe in the miraculous uh, because nothing is impossible right? Though letting go of something and this uncaging, you know, setting something free, that can feel really challenging. Like I said, it's, it's quite, it's one thing to sit here before these beautiful cards and to bring this message, though living it and experiencing it can look quite different. This is meant to be though a message of faith and a message of encouragement for you to trust the love and the light that you are, to uncage that, wake the lion within, be the miracle that you are, and allow the fullness of your authenticity to be free. So this is a this is a gift that's coming not only from the retrograde, but also the pull of this full moon. <laughs> yeah, we're all gonna be there on Halloween night, completely unleashed. <laughs> I like the sound of that. So what does the tarot have to say about the full moon in Taurus and your uh, your dream needing a practical plan? <laughs> your first card, our first card is the seven of wands. I love the seven of wands in this deck, you know, because this is an example of what I was just talking about, how, you know, going into the depths of our watery world of emotion and plucking out the stuff in our subconscious that isn't serving our beautiful, unleashed, uncaged, roaring lion heart, right? Uh, <laughs> it doesn't look so pretty at midnight. Um, it's uncomfortable. But what I'm getting at here with the seven is all sevens in tarot are heaven touching earth. The seven of wands is typically considered a defensive card. And here you have people sandbagging against a flood, right? And the feeling that I have from this deck, when I ever saw this beautiful seven of wands, I thought, wow, it's really better to just let the water rise, let it come. 
because when it recedes, it's going to leave some real gems behind. And that's the feeling that I have here. When we decide to go boldly into the subconscious journey in Scorpio season, in a retrograde, we're going to see some stuff that we'd like to sandbag. <laughs> yeah, I don't want that crud flooding me. But you know what? It's been living there anyway. So it might be better to just allow the water to rise. Don't take a defense against it. Um, because that water is going to help you uncage. And won't that be beautiful? <laughs> Let's see what's next. Yeah, okay, now the Ten of Wands. Sometimes the artwork, that is the wands, right? Yes. Sometimes the artwork is counterintuitive to what we know of tarot. Usually we see a person really um, kind of pressed to the ground with wands. You know, they, the burden is too great and they have to set it down. And in this deck, you know, you have two people carrying the harvest up the hill. Yeah, it's uphill, but they're bringing it home. They're bringing the harvest home. And this is one of the gems that might be left by the receding water on the Heaven touching earth, seven of wands in the reading here. It might be better, again, just to let that come because it's going to wash a harvest up on our shore. And it is going to bring a great big love that wakes the inner fire, the lion. Now in the suit of wands, that's the ace of wands to the power of ten. That's a positive message. That's creative fire and passion and skills and talents and ambition and raw enthusiasm, excited anticipation and wow, right? So if we're setting down an energy that may have been obscuring that or an obstacle to all of that, then the burden is worth setting down. It's worth doing this kind of inner journey work so that we can set it all free and then allow that to be. Beautiful. Next we have, oh my goodness, there it is, Ace of Cups. Yeah, what happens when you clear your foundation? Oh, I don't know. A divine and cosmic gift of pure, raw, overflowing, love, bliss, joy, and happiness. Ace of Cups. <laughs> so this is what happens when we put a little attention on the dreams that we hold in our hearts. When we get out of the way of the, the foggy, watery world of retrogrades, and we start looking at things from a different perspective, we start considering what doesn't serve us and we really do let that go, it makes way for this. It makes way for this. So we've got great big love and the Ace of Cups. Hmm. Maybe for some of you, <laughs> oh yeah, this is so nice. Maybe for some of you this full moon brings you uh, the gift of celebrating self-love and and love between you and your beloved and then you have the four of wands yeah happiest card in the minor minor arcana of tarot super stable foundation so here with the the waters rising on the seven of wands um, and the burden being set down on the ten of wands we're making way for the ace of cups being delivered by the divine cosmic all in the form of the four of wands. So love, bliss, joy, happiness, connection, happy homes, happy families, great big love. <laughs> okay, let's take a look at our uh, beautiful uncaging and what was the message on this full moon? Hmm. Surrender to the divine. Hmm. Allow the divine allow things to come to you look at this our first card <laughs> what was all that about scorpio season yep a little bit of the death card why not why not have pure scorpio right here in the center of the reading that's excellent i love seeing this card and uh it's furthering the message over here of that seven of wands it's this is an opportunity for us to clear the deck sweep the foundation, flood the foundation because we absolutely make way for the Ace of Cups, the Four of Wands, the beautiful uncaging, the great big love, and we wake the lion. Perfect, right? So again, the death card shows up here to confirm that as some things come to an end, a whole brand new beginning 
uh, arrives on the foundation for us. So yes, do this, keep going. Next we have, what is this? Oh, eight of wands, a swift moving energy. So that's the four of wands now doubled in the reading, super stable energy, information incoming. I feel that's intuitive information as well. Scorpio is a super, super intuitive, empathic, psychic sign. So why not have the Eight of Wands right next to that? And this is divine communication that is assisting us in setting ourselves free in that beautiful uncaging. <laughs> so the Eight of Wands is also a unifying energy. So we come back to uh, the Ace of Cups here. In Ancient Tarot, it's a marriage card. It's the weaving together of energies. It's the unifying of things. Uh, and take that where it's relevant for you in your world. It may be in the way you are of service and your career. Likely, though, you're going to have this in relationship of some kind. Family, family of friends, beloved relationship. So pay attention to your intuitive downloads at this time. They are exceptionally accurate, totally heightened by the full moon energy, and worthy of the guidance they provide. We've been hearing the whispers from the retrograde of the ego. The, the ego has been whispering for a while and that has brought up again some of those old self-sabotaging uh, messages for us. And this is exactly what we're sweeping death card off the foundation. But that ego chatter may have been so loud that it felt permanent rather than temporary. And Here's the Eight of Wands sweeping in for us with beautiful, guided, intuitive messages. And in the suit of wands, you know, this is going to connect in your heart, in your where your creative fire and passion resides anyway. So this amplifies now under the full moon all of that enthusiasm, excited anticipation, your skills, your talents. You're able to shine again. I love that. And then, oh gosh. <laughs> Here he is. Here's our guy, the Knight of Swords. You know I love him. And he's right next to the Eight of Wands. And I like this because the Eight of Wands is super stable. And that Knight of Swords is the least stable of all the Knights. He is so impetuous. He has no peripheral vision whatsoever. His saving grace is that the Death card is here next to the Eight of Wands. So there is some sort of intuitive guidance on offer out of the Death card, which takes away the caution of the Knight of Swords inability to look into the periphery because he is so mission oriented. So this is also a message too of there's not there's no need to rush here. You don't have to rush through all this gorgeous energy just to get to the other side. The ego voice whisper would have us doing that like oh just get through this, just get over this. Remember Please remember, it's temporary, it has value, it's worth. It's worthy of your attention, and it's worthy of whatever healing, wholeness, compassion, kindness you can bring to whatever rises up out of these deep, watery, stormy depths. Allow that to happen. And again, there's no need to rush that part of it either. It's a valuable life experience. And then coming next is the Queen of Cups. I love that she's here because... I like seeing the death card with either the High Priestess or the Queen of Cups. It's a pattern that happens here on the channel. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's rare for me to turn over the death card without one of those ladies showing up nearby. So I love to see that. The Queen of Cups is intuition all day long. So since it's heightened and she's holding the Ace of Cups that's already here in the reading, uh, this confirms for us just how valuable the information incoming on the Eight of Wands is. And also how stable it is because queens and kings are masters in tarot. So we have the mastery of her in intuition, her emotional awareness, her intimacy. And this is an expansive energy and brings even more stability to the Knight of Swords because her intuition will also take care of this Knight's inability to look into the periphery. He can stay mission-oriented. We can stay mission-oriented on our beautiful uncaging, our great big love, and waking our inner lion and our fire, right? And there's nothing that's going to surprise us 
out of the ethers because we are emotionally awake, aware, alert, and intimate to everything that is unfolding because this seven is reminding us to come out of resistance. There's nothing to hang on to there. A burden is truly being set down and a brand new beginning is evolving. Mm. All right, next we have the blue moon, which is believe in the impossible. I say believe in the miraculous, and here we are, waking the lion. There's our miraculous. <laughs> oh, and how perfect the star. Yes, this is everything we hold in heart space, have faith for, and intend to create in our life. This is what's going on in the great big love. This is the plan that requires a little bit of attention on our full moon in Taurus. So our dreams need a practical plan. This is a message encouraging us to revisit what we've been holding in heart space. So come back to the star. <laughs> Get into the flow of your goals, dreams. All right, next, look at this. Another ace. The ace of wands, not shabby at all. There's the creative fire. We've got it over here on the Ten of Wands. That's something coming into completion. That's us setting down the sandbag in the depths of the subconscious and saying, you know what, that's it. Let the water rise. Let all that junk come to the surface and let's see what goodies are left behind when it recedes. And what's left behind is the Ace of Cups and the Ace of Wands. A new beginning. The Death card is helping to sweep all of that away, keeping our greatest joy and happiness at the forefront of our heart space. So listen to your intuition. Recall the seeds that you planted long ago for manifestation because they are on offer to blossom in this beautiful full moon energy and with the energy of these aces. And then next, talk about unifying energies. There's the two of cups now. This is a connection to the eight of wands. There's that unifying energy. This is about a bond growing deeper within self-relationship. And it's, it, of course, happens everywhere else. We talk about this all the time here on the channel. So this is what you have. When the water recedes, what do you have? You've got the two aces and you've got the two of cups. There is more of you to go around now. You have so much more to offer because you are not burdened by your ten of wands. You are being the great big love. You are the awakened lion. You are beautifully uncaged. Yeah. And then we have <laughs> the king of wands. Well, Mr. Passion himself, why not, holding the Ace of Wands. I love that. Strong, direct, fiery energy. And you do want to come out of a Seven of Wands in this deck like a King of Wands. <laughs> Gregarious, engaged, excited, ambitious, ready. That's what I hear, ready. So... There it is. Use this beautiful full moon energy to get into the depths of your being. Understand that what you dig up there is temporary and it's looking for a way through and out. The death card is here to help with all of that to assist. And then that makes way for you to bring all those beautiful seeds you planted long ago into the light of the moon. And it's met with the Ace of Cups, the Ace of Wands, the King of Wands, and so much more. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Uh, like, share, subscribe. Hit the notification bell here on the channel. Check out the November readings. Those are available. There's one for each sign. Watch your sun, moon, rising, Venus. And certainly tune into the dailies. All the info you could possibly need about all of these readings is down below in the description box. Have a beautiful day. Peace, love, happiness. Namaste.